Hi, my name is Niall. Um, I'm from Bristol. I'm an artist who works with large scale painting and multilingual type. I kind of dropped it once I got into secondary school because it was kind of like, it felt like arts and stuff wasn't really accepted as much. And mm -hmm. I kind of felt like, oh shit, I need to, I don't want to stand out even further. I was in this really predominantly white school. So I kind of left that to the side and started to think, oh, maybe I'll go down the academic background. And then once I got to sixth form, I kind of realized that this like math and further math and physics route was not the thing. Uh, so I started, I started getting back into art again. So it started really with uh, video, actually, like having a video camera and filming my friends and stuff and editing. And then after that, I, I just watched like loads and loads of documentaries of, of painters. And it just, I don't know, something, something was really enigmatic about it, like something really drew me to it. And it felt like I wanted to re get re, uh, I reinstate the relationship I had with like drawing and art. So yeah, I just, I, I remember I had some like extra money lying around from like a bursary and I just bought some paint material. Um, and yeah, I just started working again. So from like a year and a half ago, I started painting and yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Your style seems like very consistent, very refined. Is that something that you thought of consciously or is that something that just comes naturally to you? So basically I was, when I, when I started picking up painting and uh, drawing again, I was like, because I hadn't drawn for so long, I felt like my drawing was like horrific. Like I just, anatomy was like so off key now. So I started, because I was on the tube all the time, I was going to, up in first year I was in Chelsea and I had to travel all the way to Chelsea from like Finsbury Park. Um, it was always like a long tube ride. So I just started, I got a little sketchbook, like a really cheap notebook and a pen. I like just draw people on the tube. Obviously now you can never do that. That's like, <laughs> that's, like not to, that's not a thing at all. But um, yeah, I just was drawing people and I tried to get more confident with it. And because I knew that it was like pressuring me to my old drawing style when I was a kid, I was always scared of making mistakes. So I had a lot of, I did a lot of stuff in pencil and rubbing stuff out. So I said, oh, okay, if I use pen, and I have to draw this person on the tube and I know they're going to leave in like two stops. It's going to force me to like deal with the mistakes. So I kind of did, I would have this account called like tube drawing and I'd like draw a person like pretty much every day and like post, post a picture and then post a little picture of like maybe semi cropped of them. I'd, it like, if I felt like they were, if I felt like they were comfortable, if not, I would, I wouldn't. And yeah, just like from there, that's kind of, I started picking out which bits um, were like quickest, what bits stood out in a person's form. So usually it would, I'd usually notice like shoulder, shoulder bone. Um, I would do arms in a certain way, like really quickly. And I feel like that's where my style sort of uh, flourished from, was actually from, yeah, drawings on the tube. How long do you think you've been doing the style you have currently? Yeah, really, I guess it's, I've noticed that from the day one of starting and starting painting, and I feel like I was really heavily influenced by, I'd only seen like two artists really, which was like, I knew Picasso, I knew Basquiat, and then I looked at Cy Twombly, actually, and then that, that was literally it. I wasn't really, my art history wasn't that expanded. Plus like I never studied, studied art in school, so, it was always just a thing I had done at home to like kind of escape. So like from there, it was so heavily influenced, uh, I think by them, but there were certain, I've noticed that even from um, from the beginning to now, there are certain elements which like I can see, which have come through, I've just maybe refined. So I've always, I've, I've noticed I've always done uh, mouth a certain way uh, like these really like squiggly mouths with like the teeth really embedded. And actually I think teeth is quite an like uh, important thing to me because like for when I when I grew up and stuff, there was a lot of times I remember I used to like chip or break my teeth or like I remember I got in an accident one time and like I don't know why I thought that the idea of teeth was really important. 
uh, shoulders because I guess I was always I felt really always really really like super skinny in my body and I'd always see like my kind of like my bone structure like pointing out so I think those sort of things they've always followed through and yeah hope that answers the question <laughs> yeah yeah it does do you feel like the work you're producing now is a good representation of you I would say it's getting better it's getting clearer I don't know if it's like I feel like all of these things, as you're obviously progressing as an artist, are always going to be a representation of you in different states. But I guess it's getting clearer in the sense of uh, getting more refined, maybe taking away um, unnecessary DLs in the sense of like stuff where it's maybe I'm overcompensating. Um, and now I feel like at the beginning, another really important element of my work has always been the typography. I've always really been interested in um, language. And I felt before I was looking more outwardly at other people's cultures and maybe um, being like black and mixed race, uh, I've kind of always felt a bit like in between of my identity because sometimes I felt like, oh, I'm very comfortable with being black. And then maybe around in a black community, I feel like, oh, they, they kind of other me or maybe they don't see me as fully black or maybe I don't get, maybe they, they see me as mixed in different ways. So I felt that clash in identity and also seeing my family, I kind of looked outwardly at other people's languages and I was like, oh, that kind of, all these different languages, the feeling of feeling othered by not understanding and, and there being a big gap I could kind of relate to. And then I feel like now a big change is I've been looking at my own language, which I felt maybe in some ways a bit embarrassed or ashamed by, because I even like the the concept of like patwa, like Jamaican patwa. I never even really saw it as like like a dial a language or a dialect or a, a, a Creole, Creole language, because I don't know when I was growing up, it was always I feel like it was always mocked until I came into uni and then I was with other cultures and then maybe they'd hear a patwa and I'd completely understand it or be able to explain something. Then I really realized, oh, this is a unique way of speaking. I do have my own unique way of speaking. I don't need to look outwardly at these different things and see myself in that. Like there are things part of my culture, which, which like represent me. So now I've been looking more at like uh, words in my own culture, looking at, and even being okay with the fact that, you know, having English and, and Patois is like my ways of communicating myself is okay. Because I feel like also being uh, being black and living in a European country, you're kind of a, I feel like there's a little bit of a shameless in a way of like, oh, we have to adopt this English language, which wasn't even our native or mother tongue realistically. And we're kind of now in a Western society when we're from all these different places like Caribbean and African countries, West African countries, do you know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what I think. Did you say from um sorry, part of your heritage is from Jamaica? Uh yes, yeah, so I'm Jamaican, Grenadian, uh Scottish and Italian. Wow. <laughs> Fair enough. How do you feel? Do you feel like your career as an artist is accepted within your family? Because I know a lot of black families like going into professional careers and all that do you feel like it's accepted do they understand yeah, I'm, I'm quite lucky that my mom is my mom used to be a singer in like a, in like a jungle group in the jungle era like in the 90s in bristol so she's she's always been creative and she's always been on the music side and then my dad even though i don't really have much relationship with him or um he was a fashion designer. So I think even though they both maybe didn't get to take their careers as far as they wanted to, uh, they've they've always been artistic and my mom has always been in support of me doing anything uh creative really. Like I don't I don't feel like yeah, I've always felt okay to 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 kind of to kind of uh pursue this. So yeah, they've yeah, my mom's been quite a deep, uh, big support in a way since I've been in London. Like sometimes I've been feeling, oh, is this really the right thing to do? I remember I was like kind of holding to doing film and music edit and music, 
video editing a lot because I was thinking, oh, there's more money in that. It's a bit more stable. It's creative, but like maybe there's less risk of me or failure. Um, and I kind of established a bit more in that side at the beginning. Um, but she pushed me, you know, to be like, oh, you do do what you want because realistically, like, whilst you're young or, yeah, whilst you're coming up, like, these are the times you can really experiment and do what you want. And soon enough, like, you know, there may be times where you're kind of trapped because say like my mom, like, because she was a single mom and she had children uh, from from young age to, uh, to later, like, it kind of put her in a position where her craft, her doing her creative, uh, her things, like, it was sort of, it was very difficult. So I think because of that and because of her experience with uh, doing music and maybe not fully, like, sometimes maybe not doing the decision she really felt her heart was in, um, she kind of pushes me to just do, you know, do what I think is best for me. So I'm quite lucky in that sense, yeah. That's lovely. Do you see yourself doing this for the foreseeable future? Is it a side thing for you or is it the thing for you, do you think? Yeah, this this is uh, yeah definitely for the foreseeable future. This is kind of my life. Like, uh, I've tried so many different uh creative outlets and I feel like painting and making and, and art is definitely the thing I feel most myself in and where I can, you know, really feel quite, yeah, quite at ease and happy and kind of release that sort of anxiety about things. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely see this as uh, where I want to take my career and where I want to go to um, and yeah, being, being a, Renowned artist, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't laugh when you say that. It's like with chess. <laughs> yeah, sure if you're looking back on your journey, is there anything you would have told yourself to do or to other artists who you think they should do at the start of their journey? Um, I just wish I would like kept this going really I think when I was younger because this was always it's funny because I, I remember finding this old like uh what do you call the end of school end of year book thing right but this was in okay. primary school and um I remember I had that I was like what do you want to be and I was like I want to be an artist right and I, it's weird because when I look back to those times I don't remember ever like, I don't remember the idea of being an artist as the big thing it was like oh you need to just find something find a career which is gonna you know just make you money so I kind of wish that I kept that childlike mentality of really being like oh you know I'm gonna really pursue what I really want to do and, and, and it's like actually feasible and I think a lot of us from marginalized groups uh, because usually we're from a lower ep uh, ec economical economical background um, we kind of are uh, the rushes to get our family out of the situation and make money. That's like the main thing. So, and obviously that's great if you can do that. But I think at the same time, we forget about, you know, what we really want to do or what really makes us happy. And we kind of settle for less in a way. We settle to get our family in a better uh, economic position. So I think if, if I could go back, I would just really tell myself that like, you know, just to follow what I really, you know, wanted to do and and kind of, yeah, focus. Yeah, just focus on what I want to do rather than getting caught up in the idea of I need to do a X, Y, and Z job or I need to study something. Because I, I, I remember I was like studying like math, forever math and physics at like sixth form, which is like completely the opposite thing. I even worked like in a bank for a bit. <laughs> when I was in that's Bristol, crazy. it was like, like no, like obviously I respect people. Like that's that's what some people want to do, but for me it was like that was like hell to me. Like I really did not enjoy it, but I was just doing it because I was like, oh well, at least I'm on a little salary, and at least you know I I can help myself, and maybe I can start helping my mom and send like send home more money whilst I'm living by myself. And it's just like nah, yeah, I don't think do what you want. Amazing.